Now, let's discuss the next periodic property that is uh, electronegativity. Okay, so three periodic properties we have already discussed. We have learned uh, atomic size, ionization enthalpy, electron gain enthalpy, and now today we'll discuss the next periodic property electronegativity okay now before starting with this property uh, some description is there okay so i'm explaining something listen carefully uh, you we know that a covalent bond is always formed by mutual sharing of electrons okay you have learned about two types of bonds ionic bond which is formed by transfer of electrons and covalent bond which is formed by sharing of electrons okay now on there are two types of molecules okay uh, polar and non-polar now what is the meaning of non-polar molecules we'll discuss that thing first so i have written one example here hydrogen and hydrogen okay now hydrogen and hydrogen have a covalent bond one electron is given by the first hydrogen atom second electron is given by the second hydrogen atom and there is sharing of electrons by the two atoms now what happens since the two atoms are similar the two atoms have equal tendency to attract the shared pair of electrons because the nuclear charge of first atom and the nuclear charge of second atom are same. So they have equal tendency to attract the shared pair of electrons. So what will happen? The shared pair will remain in between these two atoms. Okay, since the two atoms are equally attracting the electrons, the two electrons will remain in between these two atoms. Okay, as a result, now there will not be any charge on each of the atom. See, now the two atoms are not having any charge it means no polarity is there polarity means poles poles means charges okay so such molecules are non-polar molecules which do not have any kind of charge on them no plus minus is there so such are non-polar molecules but suppose i have uh, hf as an example now these two atoms are dissimilar Okay, the nuclear charge of hydrogen and the nuclear charge of fluorine are different. And definitely fluorine is having more nuclear charge because number of protons are more. So what will happen? The two participating atoms have different tendencies to attract the shared pair. Since fluorine has greater nuclear charge, so what the fluorine will do? It will attract the shared pair of electrons towards itself. The electron pair will remain in between the two atoms only. Okay, it's not like this that the bond is changing to ionic. The bond is covalent only, there is sharing of electrons, but the only thing is the shared pair is shifted more towards the fluorine because fluorine has greater nuclear charge. You can see in the um, diagram also. Now this H and F is there. Now fluorine is what it is doing? It is attracting the shared electrons towards itself. So the electron pair is shifted more close to fluorine. And if the electron pair is shifted more close to fluorine, what will happen? The two atoms will acquire charge. Now fluorine is having electrons, okay, it, the electrons are closer to fluorine, so fluorine acquires del minus charge, del means partial, it's not complete plus and complete minus, complete plus and complete minus means the atom has completely given, donated, and complete minus means the atom has uh, completely taken the electrons, fluorine has not accepted the electrons inside its atom, the electron pair is only shifted towards fluorine, so it is partial negative and partial positive. Okay, the electrons are away from hydrogen, so it is partial positive now. And the electrons are towards fluorine, so it is partial negative. And this development of charge is known as polarity. Clear? So such molecules are polar molecules. Polarity depends upon the tendency of an atom to attract the shared electrons. Clear? And this tendency of an atom to attract the shared pair of electrons towards itself in a covalent bond is known as electronegativity. Okay, so this uh, tendency of fluorine, we'll call it as electronegativity. So what is electronegativity? Electronegativity means property of an atom so that it can attract the shared pair of electrons towards itself. Clear? Yeah. And remember one thing, uh, this property is entirely different from electron gain enthalpy. Because in electron gain enthalpy, the electron enters inside the atom. Okay, the energy released when electron is added to an atom. Here we are not adding the electron to the atom. The atom is only attracting the electron towards itself. And this property is related to the atoms in the bonded state. Whereas electron gain enthalpy was related to the property of isolated atoms. Is this clear? So, 
it is related to the atoms in the bonded state and one more point is there electronegativity values of different elements cannot be measured we cannot measure it we can only compare that this is more negative this is more electronegative and this is less electronegative okay so these cannot be measured but these are derived indirectly by different methods we can only compare the elements okay so we can compare two elements that when two atoms are bonded together okay so this element is less electronegative and this element is more electronegative okay okay now how to measure electronegativity okay so how to determine it we cannot measure it so we use a most common scale of electronegativity that is pauling scale and on pauling scale we can only compare the elements okay uh, assigning an arbitrary value to one of the elements the electronegativity values of other elements can easily be calculated okay and uh, what pauling did he assigned the value of 4.0 to the most electronegative element that is fluorine so in the entire periodic table fluorine is considered as the most electronegative element because because of its small size and high nuclear charge and he assigned the value of four. so fluorine is the most electronegative element in your entire periodic table okay and what is the periodic variation of electronegativity so in a period as size decreases nuclear charge increases left to right so attraction for outer electron will increase and electronegativity will increase so left to right electronegativity always increases and down the group size increases bonding electron moves away from the nucleus and electronegativity decreases so this is the periodic variation of our uh, next Uh, periodic property that is electronegativity we can only compare the elements okay uh, good morning dear students now moving on to the last topic of this chapter okay now we have learned the periodic properties okay we have learned the variation of periodic properties in period and group and solved numerical and solved questions based on them also now the last topic is periodic trends in chemical properties okay and the first is periodicity of valence or oxidation state okay now what is the meaning of uh, valence or oxidation state uh, we know that the electrons present in the outermost shell of an atom are known as valence electrons and these electrons determine the valence of the atom okay valence of the atom means uh, what do you mean by valency you have learned in 10th class valency is the combining capacity okay so this is the valence only that how many bonds that particular element can make or how many electrons that particular element can utilize in the formation of bonds now valence we calculate for group number 1 second that is our s block and group number 13 to 18 clear so for group number 1 the number of valence electrons are 1 and the valence is also equal to 1 now how to calculate valence valence is either equal to number of valence electrons or 8 minus the number of valence electrons so for group number first it is 1 only for group number 2 so up to group number 14 the number of valence electrons are 1 2 3 and 4 and valence is also 1 2 3 and 4 but from group number 15 to 18 the valence electrons are 5 6 7 and 8 and the valence can be now valence is equal to 3 that is 8 minus 5 or 5 2 that is 8 minus 6 and 6 uh, 1 that is 8 minus 7 and 7 and 8 that is 8 minus 8 is 0 and 8 so this is the valence for group number 1st second and 13 to 18 clear now the next is anomalous properties of elements of second period elements okay now what is the meaning of this okay now we know that uh, the elements uh, first period we generally don't discuss because the first period has that element hydrogen uh, which shows anomalous behavior okay and helium helium is our noble gas so generally we discuss our properties from second period only okay now the first element of each of the groups first second and 13 to 17 differ in many respect from the other members of the respective group Yeah. Now what happens? Now these are the members of your second period: lithium, beryllium, boron, and carbon. Now we have learned that in periodic table, all the elements belonging to a particular group, okay, they have similar properties. Okay, all the elements present in a particular group have similar properties. Why they have similar properties? Because their valence electrons are same. All the elements present in a group have same outer electrons or valence electrons. Okay, so their properties are same. but it is observed that the first member of each group in the second period now we will not discuss first period here so first member of each group will lie in the second period only 
okay so first member of each group that lies in the second period differ from rest of the members now i will i will explain this thing uh, my first group is uh, that uh, lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium and friendship now which element will lie in the second period lithium so it is observed that lithium differ from rest of the members likewise second group now what is the first member of second group it is beryllium so beryllium will differ from rest of the members clear and this is known as anomalous behavior of the elements of second period okay so all the members in the second period they differ from the remaining members of their respective groups this is known as anomalous behavior now then to what they resemble they resemble with the element of next higher period and next higher group now what is the meaning of this lithium will not resemble with sodium but lithium will resemble with magnesium now what is magnesium magnesium is belonging to higher group and higher period beryllium will resemble with aluminium boron will resemble with silicon is this clear so this diagonals are formed and this relationship this similarity which they show diagonally is known as diagonal relationship clear so two things are there all the elements of second period differ from the rest of the members of the respective groups and they resemble with the element of next higher period and next higher group that is this relation is known as diagonal relation and what is the reason for this anomalous behavior of first member why lithium does not resemble with sodium why beryllium does not resemble with magnesium the answer is the first member is always smallest in size because we know that down the group size increases so definitely lithium and beryllium are smallest in their respective groups if size is small ionization enthalpy is highest so they will not lose electrons easily the third is absence of d orbitals since the elements lie in the second period they don't have d orbitals okay so d orbitals start from third period okay and high electronegativity because of small size their electronegativity is very high so because of the all these four reasons the first member differ from rest of the members of the group now uh, one chart is there and this chart shows periodic trends and chemical reactivity now this is my periodic table okay now uh, all these things we have learned only i have summarized the things okay so down the group atomic size increases okay from right to left my atomic size will again increase from here to here negative electron gain enthalpy increases from here to here ionization enthalpy increases from here to here electronegativity increases from here to here from this corner to this corner non metallic character increases from this corner to this corner metallic character increases from bottom to top negative electron gain enthalpy increases from bottom to top ionization enthalpy increases and from bottom to top electronegativity also increases so these arrows are showing increasing direction clear so i have summarized all the periodic properties uh together in the periodic table okay so this is a summary of your periodic trends clear yeah. so with this your chapter is over okay now some uh, questions i am sending along with this video okay try to solve this question and if you have any doubt and if you have any doubt you can text me the message